Good afternoon, YouTube. I just wanted to hop on here real quick and uh, talk about a few things that's happening around the world. I, I, uh, I'm fascinated with Bible prophecy, and I pay attention to what's going on not only in America, but it seems like more prophetic things are happening in Israel and around the Middle East and America. But something got my attention when I read a news article over the weekend. I talked to my pastor and his mom about it at Bible study Sunday morning, and there's a news, a Christian news channel that talked about it and broke the news that that there was this like an image of a beast that the United Nations in America in New York had accepted from as a gift from Mexico. Um, the alarming thing is when nations don't understand Bible prophecy or God's word or the Bible. Period. <laughs> When they don't really pay attention to what God's word even says, they will actually unintentionally fulfill Bible prophecy because, well, when nations fall away from God, they don't pay attention to what God's word says anyway, right? So today I want to just, just talk about that briefly where, and, and you can you can actually uh, Google it, it'll come up. It's, it's known, it's on the internet. So it's not just me saying it. But I looked at the image... And it, it looked gross, looked evil to me at first when I looked at it. But I, at the point, at the time, I didn't really understand the significance of it until I read more into it and Googled it and seen what all it's talking about. And even the news outlet even acknowledged that uh, Daniel chapter 7 and also Revelation 13 had mentioned that the beast would look just like that. Now, this beast... This statue, or whatever you want to call it, that they put on, by the way, they were, they've been, you know, tearing down our statue, uh, statues of our history when they were being evil and tearing down our history. And I said in, in October 2020, they'll probably end up putting their own evil image up. Well, here we are. We're talking about it. And so they, they put this beast up, not realizing that the Bible in Revelation 13 says these words in Revelation chapter 13. And it says in verse 2, And the beast which I saw was like a leopard, and the body looks like a leopard. And his feet were like those of a bear, and it is. And his mouth like the mouth of a lion, and it is. Just like the Bible said. And then there's another statue image that they put up in New York at a different location that had a dragon sticking out. Now these things... Are, are these, these dragons and images and, and everything that talk, talks about these ten horns and some some of the Bible verses in Revelation? It's representing these countries. There's many kingdoms that are going to rise up. Uh, well, many of them's going to try to destroy Israel at the Armageddon War. But for America to start making a peace treaty, a peace covenant with other nations. And it represents though all of those in that statue, in that image of the beast. It represents those nations. You United Nations, you know, united. And I'm reminded how it's going to be one world system, one world government. The Antichrist is going to rule and reign during the seven-year tribulation. Isn't that amazing? And you can see, I've always wondered why America's not really mentioned in Bible prophecy. And so you can see how America's just going to fit right in with, with those big mighty powerhouses of countries and they're going to come up against because Israel is going to stand alone. America's not going to have their back at the end. That's why the Lord has to come and intervene. Now, the reason I wanted to talk about that Revelation 13 perfectly describes this beast that is now sitting at the United Nations is because it represents the peace treaty. And that's what I want to focus on is because when they are saying 2 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3, when they are saying, peace and safety, sudden destruction comes upon them, and they shall not escape, it says, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. And that image represents peace and safety, peace and security. It's a peace treaty. And for them to use that, it has so much biblical significance to it, you know. Isn't that amazing? And uh, on Friday, I'm going to go to Matthew 24 here. And I'll, as all of you, most of you know by now that on Friday uh, evening, Friday overnight into Saturday, there were some very harsh storms. 
and uh, a lot of people have died. A lot of people have not been found yet. Still are roughly a hundred, they say, are missing. You know why this is so significant? God's speaking. God speaks when things like this take place. The enemy does a lot of things. He's got so much power, but not. He's going to lose at the end, and he knows it. He's going to be cast into a lake of fire. But the Bible will be fulfilled, and that's why God allowed the image of the beast to be brought into America. Because it's going to happen. The Bible says so. Now, when, when America accepted such a wicked, evil image statue, then God speaks. God makes himself known too. And in Matthew 24, it talks about there will be... Uh, there will be many different earthquakes, famines. In verse 7, the nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And in various places, there will be famines and earthquakes. But all these things are merely the beginning of the birth pains. Then they will deliver you into tribulation and they will kill you. So there will be many different plagues. We've already had that, the Rona. <laughs> We've had that for a while, a uh, year and a half or so. But now in the devil knows he's running out of time. He doesn't know the day or the hour. But now he's increasing his attacks. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy and get as many souls as he can. So right when America as a nation accepted this image of the beast, that same night overnight, God speaks. It's now reported that there's been over 60 tornadoes. God spoke to this nation, this land. And if any of you are you wondering why God would allow such a thing? Well, I'm here to tell you today, God and all of the Bible didn't tolerate evil forever. We have a just, righteous, holy God that cannot tolerate sin. And there will be consequences. Just like Israel, every time they have fallen away from God, God delivered them into the Amorites' hands, into different nations' hands in the Old Testament. Every time a wicked ruler a wicked king came along. And if they fell away from God, away from God's word, this book, God spoke. He intervened. But he will not allow sin to go unpunished. And, and if, you, if, you, if you're one of those that say, like a few people that messaged me yesterday on Facebook when I preached about the same thing on Facebook. When a few people said, Eli, there was a five-month-old baby that passed away in that storm. Are you telling me God is real? God could have stopped that tornado from killing that innocent. Go read the book of Job, my friends. If you don't trust God, I want you to read the book of Job before you comment on this video. If you have any animosity or anger towards God for allowing such things to happen. Sure, innocent lives were lost. That's why we always got to be ready and accept the Lord Jesus Christ and make him the Lord of our lives. Put our faith and trust in him for the forgiveness of sins and believe the, the finished work on the cross, that it was finished on the cross. We must believe it because when those storms and trials come, when God's wrath comes, we're ready. But God will not let sin go unpunished. It can't go unpunished. So just remember, we must be ready always. Put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ today if you haven't done so. I got a call coming in and it's important, so I gotta go. God bless you all.